Hey, this is Jeff. I'm going to make some video series uh, during this time, kind of to get our minds off of the you-know-what virus and lift our eyes up on to Jesus and to his land. A lot of my messages will be um, based on my trip to Israel and uh, just trying to escape there a little bit and go to a higher place where we could focus on the Lord and his work. But for my first uh, conversation, I want to talk about worry a little bit um, and kind of paint a picture of the context Jesus was in um, when he said, do not worry. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. And let's pray uh, before we get started. Father, you are a good and sovereign God. You are over our lives. You are over the situation. You are over the planet and over your creation, Lord. Father, I pray that you would help us to lift up our eyes beyond the problems and look to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So let me, let me explain the culture of when Jesus is teaching on worry uh, when he's up on the mountainside talking to the people. Uh, a little bit of a similar situation that we're in today. The Jewish people were under oppression. Uh, they're under the heavy hand of control of the Roman Empire. Uh, times were tough for them. Um, there were exorbitant taxes. So even survival uh, for the common... Uh, Average Joe or Average Joseph was very tight. Uh, some of them were farmers. And in this area um, around the Sea of Galilee, there were fishermen, there were farmers, there were people that would do trade around, around the uh, Via Maris, uh, which went through Capernaum, which is right by where Jesus did this teaching. And so the people were tight. And... Um, Sometimes there was barbarism from the Romans, so they had difficulties. And there was oppression that they were facing, and we are definitely facing some oppression today, too. So let me read the words of Jesus here uh, in Matthew. It says this, Therefore, I tell you, whenever you see a therefore, you ask, What is therefore, therefore? Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and is tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. God is saying, I got it. I 
clothe birds and I clothe flowers. And he will care for his children. Does God know that there is a worldwide virus? Do you think that God was caught off guard by this virus? Do you think that God could remove the virus? Do you believe, do you really believe that God cares for you? Then trust him. Don't worry. Rest in his good, thorough care for your soul, for you. He sees you. He knows you. If you're in Christ, you are his child. Rest your mind. Rest your heart. Rest your body in that. Refuse to worry. Refuse to be anxious. And when you are, grab that thought. Take it captive. Put it on trial to what God says, that he loves you, that you are his that he will care for you. I'm not saying don't work or don't provide for your family or don't practice universal precautions. Well, that'd be crazy. Do those things, provide. Stock up enough for your family for a few months if you'd like. Wash your hands, quarantine yourself, but rest. I think there's a lot of peace in that. So the question for you is, will you trust Jesus? Will you trust him that what he says is true and that he is able to care for you more than birds and flowers. Do you, trust when, do you trust him when he says, you are much more valuable than them? If you are in Christ, if you are trusting Jesus for your salvation, then you can rest in him. Knowing that whatever happens, you've done your hard work but you've also depended on him and allowed him to do his work. Let's pray. Father, help us to trust you. And when worry comes up, so often does, that we would captivate those thoughts, hold them, and make them obedient to what Jesus says of us, who we are and what we should do, Lord. Father, I pray you give us wisdom to navigate this new and difficult time. Help us to lift our eyes on you. You are good. You are our Father. And you are trustworthy. And you have a plan. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.